Hey everyone, I'm Dan with jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. Today I'm here with Jim McNeely, pianist, composer, arranger, chief conductor of the Frankfurt Radio HR Big Band, and composer in residence with the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra. Today Jim is going to talk to us about various people who have influenced his writing. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, nobody gets into this and is just completely on their own. Um, I've been lucky in my life to have uh, a number of people that have helped me uh, both in music and out of music. Um, you know, Duke Ellington in his uh, book, Music is My Mistress, starts out describing uh, his life as, uh, imagine, you know, he's a little boy and the door to his house is open, the front door, and he wanders out on his own and he didn't know which way to go and he's walking down the street and every once in a while when he needed guidance, as he put it, some kind stranger would turn him in a certain direction and say, here, go this way. And I thought that's a great analogy for um, myself and I'm sure a lot of us who have been in the creative uh, world for, for some years, that um, there are certain people who just take you and steer you in a direction and say, try this and um, uh, see where you go. Uh, with me, the the first uh, was my high school band director. His name was George Wiskirken. He was a priest. Uh, I went to a high school just outside of the city of Chicago, and it was one of the few schools that had a big band. Um, and I got it into my head that I could write a big band arrangement, and he was all for that. I was a sophomore in high school. And I had the Russ Garcia arranging book, and... Uh, I read through that and learned a lot about theory. And so I wrote a, uh, an arrangement of a little Ernie Wilkins blues head. And um, I brought it in. I copied the parts myself, of course, and uh, brought it into the first rehearsal. And uh, the first time the saxes broke into this five-part harmony I had written, I thought to myself, this is the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, there's something about the sound of that. And... Um, I thought, yeah, Russ Garcia was right. This is how you do it. Of course, the, the shout chorus of the chart was a just absolute disaster, a train wreck. But um, uh, Father Wiskirkin was very nice to me, and he said, hey, write another one. Uh, we could we'll certainly play your music when, when you want to write. So I kept doing that um, with varying amounts of success. And then I went to uh, the University of Illinois down in Champaign-Urbana, which at the time had a great big band, um, led by John Garvey, who was a rather eccentric, uh, he was a viola player, actually, is, that was his first calling. But he led the jazz band there. And uh, he uh, also encouraged me to write, uh, which I did. And there was another uh, great composer there at the time. His name was James Knapp, who uh, has been living out in Seattle for some time. But uh, Jim was writing just some gorgeous big band music. And uh, that that was one of the first people to really uh, influence me and, and, you know, say, gee, I want to, I want to sound like that. How do I do that? Also my uh, private teacher, a guy called Morgan Powell, uh, was down there and he was writing this great music in the cracks between jazz and contemporary uh, classical music. Um, and then, uh, I moved to New York, but I really had no designs on becoming a writer. I was, uh, I wanted to be a piano player. Um, but I, after a couple of years, got with the Thad Jones Mel Lewis Orchestra. And uh, Thad, of course, I'd always loved his writing, and I always loved that band. Um, it swung so hard. And Thad's writing had a way of combining all this crunchy, grindy kind of harmony, but it still swung like crazy. And um, so it, it was a, a real thrill and an honor to get to uh, join that band in 1978. But I was thinking, uh, gee, here, here's Thad Jones, and we're playing his music, and Bob Brookmeyer, and, and uh, a few other people. Who am I to write for this band? But Thad left, and um, Bob Brookmeyer came in as musical director, <clears throat> and he encouraged me to write. And I brought in something, again, that it was a typical piano player's chart, way overwritten, and uh, I realized uh, later that I didn't really... I wasn't hearing a band at that time. I was writing piano music and, and putting it onto a big band score. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, Bob heard a few things that were worth pursuing in there, and he said, write another one, uh, which, you know, Bob Brookmeyer says, write another one. Wow, I guess I should. And one thing led to another. Um, so, um, and I started working with many of the European bands I've worked with and, and so forth. But I would say that, you know, Bob and Thad are the two still biggest influences on me as jazz writers. Uh, then, of course, uh, there were other people when I was in high school and college in the 60s and 70s. Oliver Nelson was a, a big influence. When, when I was uh, at a summer jazz camp in Indiana University back in the mid 60s, I was in Oliver's arranging class. I got I felt like I was in way over my head, but it was, uh, you know, it was great to have him look at some things I had written and, and give me some feedback. And um also, of course, Gil Evans, uh, his music is beautiful. And um, other composers like Stravinsky and, and Bartok are in there. And also, I found that playwrights uh, have been an influence on me. Of course, Shakespeare and uh, Tennessee Williams and uh, Eugene O'Neill and Edward Albee, people like that that are working with a time frame that goes on maybe for two hours and the way that they build their plot and the way that characters develop. And... Um, there are times I've tried to replicate that kind of dramatic movement uh, in the course of, say, an eight or 10 or 12 minute piece. So, um, you know, you can get inspiration from many different areas, um, not just uh, uh, music. And uh, also certain artists, Paul Clay has been a, a great influence on me, the, the way that he constructed his painting. So, you got to get it from anywhere you can. It's not just uh, musicians who can influence you. There's a lot of other ways to uh, be inspired and uh, to, to figure out how to how do I do this? You know, um, what are these artists doing? What are playwrights doing? What are architects doing? So um, there's a lot of a lot of stuff out there to check out, and uh, I encourage you all to be as broad-minded as you can and uh, check out anything you can that could be a source for inspiration. Uh, I like to think it worked for me and that can work for you. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.